Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to have a look at the very rare Unitron Folded Compact 4-inch. Uh, in the United States this would be a Unitron 132C. This particular telescope was sold in Italy, so the designation is slightly different. As a matter of fact, I'll show you a close-up of the focuser. It says Unitron Polar X. Both names are on this telescope. Very, very rare, very unusual. I think that may have only happened in Italy. And there's some complication with Unitron and the naming rights for uh, the products that were sold in the United States as Unitron. These were all made by Nihon Seiko. Anyway, Polar X was the name that was generally used in Europe, although uh, so in some cases they adopted the Unitron name as well. I don't know, it's a very complicated and tangled up story. Anyway, this is clearly the same thing. It doesn't have a designation of 132C printed on it, but it's the same. It's the same telescope. It's a 4-inch Unitron in a folded compact configuration. You may want to notice that this is a standard Unitron 3-inch mount, Nihon Seiko 3-inch mount, that they would find, that you would find on a 3-inch scope. Uh, obviously, putting a 4-inch scope on a 3-inch mount is not the recommended thing to do, unless it's in a folded compact format like this. That's how you can get away with it. But also notice that it's needing a, a bit more counterweight down here. So it's got two counterweights there to balance it. Give you a look all the way around. For those of you that aren't familiar with these, let me explain what happens. There's an objective up here. The light goes in and strikes a mirror back here. And you can see the housing. That's a housing for the mirror adjustment bolts and screws. Uh, then it bounces to another mirror up here. Here's the housing for that little guy. And then finally it comes back here. So you have a 4 inch F15 squeezed down to a much shorter but somewhat fatter kind of a package. It's in beautiful condition. Let me show you how this packs in the box. First of all, you can see that one of the solar screens is here. The scope is like this. I've learned from experience that if you change the orientation, it won't stow as easily, maybe not at all. So I tend to leave it in the same configuration, the same with the position of the mounting rings in the same places. Here's the other solar screen. Here's the dew shield. Last but not least, here's the solar dew shield. Here's the unique feature of these folded compact telescopes. You can loosen this here. Then you can rotate the focuser. And the idea was that you would be able to orient the focuser whatever way you preferred, depending on uh, the kind of strange angles you can get with this telescope. Then, of course, you can lock it down like that. That is pretty unique. You can see the markings on the focuser. Unitron Polarex D102 F1500. Let's pull off this back plate and take a look. Back plate is just simple screw holding that on. Here are the three adjustment knobs and you could turn these to adjust this to uh, of course orient the lens. This one is perfect the way it is so I'm not going to touch it. Although it's not hard to do that. It's not as complicated as people think it's going to be. It's really not bad. Okay here's the front of the telescope. First thing I'm going to do is remove the dew shield comes off very easily. And you can see here, there's no indication. It doesn't say either Unitron or Polar X. It's clearly the same thing. Matter of fact, you may be able to glimpse 
a hint of the green coating. I think if you look at the reflection, you can see the green coating. It's good optic. It's really, really nice. Here's a little... This, this cap here has to have a little sort of a notch out of it. As you can see, it's kind of notched like that. It's just a piece of sheet metal. Same kind of adjustment knobs, three of them to adjust that mirror. Look at the odd shape of this uh, solar projection screen. It has to be elongated because of the way this thing is configured. Slide this baby on here. With a similarly elongated kind of a white screen. Now we're set up for solar projection. Now I have the Unitron folded 4 inch compact refractor 132C next to uh, its little brother, the 131C. This is a 3 inch folded compact refractor. These scopes are virtually identical in their basic designs. Everything is proportional. It's just a three inch versus a four inch. This telescope is less rare than the four inch. The four inch, apparently they only made about 50 of those. And the three inch, I'm not sure what the numbers are there, but it's maybe three or four times as many. Uh, but it's quite a few more there. You see these more often. The four inch you never see. I thought I would never see one in my entire life. Um, so I'm very, very lucky to own one. People think that the mirrors cause a great deal of loss of light and they get all carried away. No, it's not a big deal. You're not too much worried about loss of light in a three or four inch refractor anyway. So any light loss due to, to, due to the mirrors is uh, of, of no consequence whatsoever. I have the Unitron 132C folded compact set up next to its older sibling. On the far right is a Unitron 152 from the early 1950s. This is of course from the 1980s or so. But you can see the reason that Unitron did this. They wanted to make a much more compact telescope. They were competing with telescopes that were getting smaller and more manageable. This thing uh, is much more manageable than that monster over there. I tell you, the 152 is a horse. It's heavy and it's long and it's just challenging to move that thing around. The mount is much bigger, much more massive. Look at the size of the counterweights here. Uh, it's probably twice as much counterweight or maybe even three times as much. It's a lot more counterweight, so it's a lot more um, management problem with the big telescope. It Have Unitron folded compact four inch refractor set up next to a Brandon 94 millimeter. Now this is uh, this is, at least symbolically, the scope that killed that scope. Uh, they only made a few of these. And when these started to come in, these, uh, let me explain what this is. This is a, it's almost all Nihon Seiko. The mount is Nihon Seiko. All the hardware and stuff is Nihon Seiko. It was put together by the Brandon company and they put, uh, they had an astrophysics well. It was a Roland Christian triplet objective in here. This is an APO. This is one of the earliest uh, commercially available APOs, uh, at least in the consumer market in the United States. So this is a, a really fine optic here, uh, and it was just being introduced, and this was a, approximately, you can think of these as being almost uh, at the, happening at the same time. So this one up against that one, you can imagine this would kill that scope. 
This is a nice F15 long focal ratio. It doesn't have too much color, but it does have a little bit of color. This one has less color than that. And it's an F7. Um, and it's a 94 millimeter, which is almost as big. It's almost the equivalent aperture. It also has the distinct advantage of being usable at a low power. And I've deliberately set this up with a great big two inch diagonal and a nice 20 millimeter nagler here. Low power, wide angle views, beautiful. Optics are superb, of course. Um, now you can also crank this up to the same high powers as this. It does require a little bit more of a short focal length eyepiece or maybe a Barlow of some sort, but you can use this with a 4.8 Nagler and it's 130 power and it's gonna give you a very nice image. Uh, every bit as good as this telescope at 130 power, or at least approximately as good. So, uh, and I believe the price point on this scope was probably less than the price point on that one, at least comparable. Uh, this has a simpler mount, an Altaz mount, although you could, this is a, this is all Nihon Seiko here, essentially, the focuser, everything else, pretty much Nihon Seiko. You could put this telescope on the three inch mount, the same mount that this is on, um, and that would make it ni a nice equatorial telescope. But this telescope is nice, easy to operate, beautiful, this, uh, this really beefy and robust mount is more than adequate to handle the weight of the Brandon. So you can, uh, you can even go way up high here, lock it down, it's got a counterweight on there. Lock it down, you've got nice slow motions, even uh, at that kind of an angle. So you have a very nice, <laughs> beautiful telescope, highly desirable telescope many desirable attributes this one doesn't quite have this one is designed to accept actually there were originally most of them had a draw tube that would accept 965 eyepieces you could always adapt them to inch and a quarter but there's no way you're going to ever get a two inch eyepiece in this focuser <clears throat> just not going to happen this one it just screams give me a two inch eyepiece give me a two inch diagonal so uh this I would consider to be the next evolutionary step um, beyond this one. This was a, a faltering attempt, a dead end on the evolutionary tree of telescopes. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the very interesting Unitron folded compact 4 inch 132C. Thank you for watching.